You're using WordPress and you want to enable a membership lock on your website. Well, I want to give you a free plugin option that's super easy to implement, and I'm going to show you how to use it right now. Hey, what's up, everyone? My name is George, and I'm going to show you a free WordPress plugin to enable a membership site really quickly. All right, so let's get started with this tutorial, and we're going to go into plugins, add new plugin, and we're going to search for membership. Now, you'll find several membership plugins, but the one I'm going to show you is free and it works just great. All right. So it's this one right here. Ultimate member. We're going to install this. We are going to activate this. And once it's active, it's going to ask us to do this. If you don't want it to create pages, you'll have to manually create each single one of these pages, which I don't recommend. You want to use create page. So it creates already the registration page and login, etc. really quickly. So let's go ahead and create pages. It's going to automatically create these pages and tie them to each one of these sections. If you create your page manually, you'll want to manually type in here the page that you created so it knows where the user page is, the login page, etc. All right. Now, before I show you how this actually works and how to set it up, let me show you the sponsor for this video, which is Hostinger. They provide great shared hosting plans where you can install your WordPress sites and install this membership plugin. So if you head on over to the link in the description, go to hosting, web hosting, you'll be able to find their shared hosting plans, which are really affordable. So if you check out this plan, which is the most popular one, I'm going to go ahead and select this because I want to show you how to apply an extra discount coupon code. Now, the first thing that hosting is going to ask you is how many months do you want to pay in advance? I recommend 48 months. You lock in the lowest price, lowest renewal price, plus you'll be good to go for 48 months. Now, to add my coupon code, go ahead and click on have a coupon code type in my coupon code or paste it. It's SAS master and apply it. And the price is going to drop to $172 with 37 cents. Remember that's for 48 months. So that's really affordable. All right. Okay. So back to our website, as I mentioned before, you want to make sure that you tie in the pages in case you don't automatically create them. Now, if you need to edit these pages, they'll be over here in pages. And if I edit one of these pages, they'll say here, UM, which is ultimate membership account. This is the account section. This is the login section. And if I want to edit this, I'll click on edit. Maybe I want to add some images. Maybe I want to make it more interesting. I can do so. And you see here that this is the variable code that I can use. So in case I create my own login page, maybe I'm using Elementor, I'm using Divi or another type of uh, theme out there. Well, I'll just have to use this code right here and tie it to the page that I've just created. Okay. So over here in membership, under settings is where we're going to do this. And that's the first thing you have to do in case you don't create it manually. Go ahead and tie each one of these pages correctly. All right. And you'll find the user settings over here in the users menu. And you, the first thing you want to do is set the role for the user. So when someone registers on your website, you want to designate what their role is going to be. For example, if someone registers, obviously you don't want it to be an admin because I mean, they'll get access to everything. In this case, you want to make it an author, a contributor. Maybe if this is, if this is a shop site, maybe a shop, uh, a customer over here or a subscriber, etc. you decide what you want it to be. In this case, I'll make it a customer and then the profile permalink, which is going to be username, or if you want to designate a user ID, you can do so by using this. Now these settings, I won't get into much of these because it's more of a user case type option, but go ahead and check this out on your own, right? The only thing I do want to show you is the SEO feature. If you want to enable this for the profiles to be indexed on Google and Bing, etc. right? If you don't have this enabled, those won't be indexed. All right. The next options you have is the account section and the uploads. Again, this will be upon user base. I don't want to take your time with this. Then you have your access. This is where we're going to restrict certain sections of the website. So right now it's accessible to everyone. And what we want to do, for example, is site accessible to logged in users. Then we decide what we want to lock or not. Okay. We have a custom redirect URL. If they go to a certain section, I would recommend that you take them to the login URL, but in this case, I'll just leave it blank for testing purposes. And then we have the exclude the following URLs. So maybe you want to exclude the contact page, your, I don't know, just pages that you don't want them to be excluded privacy policy, terms and conditions, etc. You can exclude them just here by adding each one of these links there. All right. And then you have the allow homepage to be accessible. In this case, yes, we do want to have it allowed because we have it blocked. If you use something else, you can go ahead and disable these features and enable what you like, right? Allow category pages to be accessible. So yes, if not, go ahead and disable this restricted post title and restricted access to post title. This is the message. 
and you can do the restricted message too. You can change these messages here manually, all right? There's also a visual editor in case you want to do this visually, all right? And then the restrict Gutenberg blocks. So I would go ahead and restrict these in case you don't want them to have access to those. Maybe they are not going to be authors. This is a different type of membership site. So you want to disable that. But if they're authors and they're going to write content, maybe you want to leave that on, right? It depends up to you. Then enable the content restriction settings for the post types. So in this case, we have restriction for this and this. And then we have the product because this has WooCommerce installed. So we got different type of settings available here. So we can restrict media, floating elements, templates, etc. We can also enable content restriction settings for taxonomy taxonomies in case you want to do that. But in this case, let's go ahead and save this. And let me give you a quick test for this. So let's go in, into incognito mode. Let's head on over there. And you can see that we have the registration for the users, password resets, my account, etc. So if I go, for example, to the shop, we go, we have to log in. We can't see this because that's blocked in the membership section. Remember, we only unlock the front page if they're not logged in. So if I go to register, I can go ahead and register right now. Let me go ahead and do something really quickly. OK, so here's my registration. Had to change the email a bit because it didn't allow me to add that one. Here we go. I am now logged in as a test test user that I, that I just created. I have my about. I have my post here. I have my comments. I have my settings for my account. And in my account, I can change some details like my name, my email. I can change my password. I can see my privacy here. Now, if I head on over to shop, here we go. I am now able to access this shop because I am logged in. And that's how I designated this to work. Now, if I log out, here we go. And I can't access now the shop section because I am not logged in because I'm using the membership plugin. So I can restrict these sections by doing this and enabling the content that I want to enable this to be in a membership section. There's also the other option here. Again, based on use case, we have the emails. The emails are sent out based on the user case. So an email will, will be sent out for the account welcome email. If you want to send an email for the account activation, go ahead and edit each one of these and enable what you wanted to send out or not. All right. Then you have your appearance settings for your login, registration, and all those sections. So you got profile menu, registration form. You can edit these forms over here also in the form section, which I'll show you in a bit. The advanced options for this and not much going on here, which I don't recommend that you move anything here. Go over to forms and in forms, we're going to be able to, for example, if you want to edit the registration form, click on edit and we can go ahead and edit the boxes that are created. We can modify these. We can add other details. We can add more sections to this. We can add images and make it really nice depending on our use case. Again, if you want to create your own registration page, you can use the short code to create your own page using Elementor, Divi, Oxygen, uh, Pages, etc., and create your own page over there by using this short code. So it's a really easy way to create your membership website using this plugin. And best of all, it's free. As of now, I think it's one of the best membership plugins that are free available right now. So do consider using it. I'll be providing the link in the description in case you guys want to check it out. And that's a wrap.